Well, welcome to uh, the latest in a series of discussions I'm having with representatives of various groups and organizations and, and, and businesses as well, just to talk about their experience of this uh, pandemic and uh, how maybe their organization or business is coping with the latest situation as it develops. Um, and joining me today is Juliet Roberts from Llanrheidr Shop, uh, a shop in the village of Llanrheidr and Hinmerch, the beautifully named Llanrheidr and Hinmerch. Uh, which is in the Vale of Clwyd between Denby and Ruthin in, in glorious Denbyshire. Welcome, Juliet. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. So tell us a bit about uh, the shop and the business that you run and what your aspirations maybe pre-COVID were, uh, and then maybe we'll come and, and talk a little bit about how things may have developed or evolved since then. Um, right, okay. Well, um, I took the shop over about three years ago um, from Errol and Mary Williams, who'd been running the shop for 18 years. Um, and before that, there'd been a village shop before then. Um, the shop has always been um, a very popular place. It's been um, a hub of the community and it's been very well supported by uh, people in the village and uh, the, the wider community. Um, so we sell um, all the basics. So you could call it a convenience store, but I like to think of it as a bit more than that. So we, we do... Um, we specialise in, in local produce and Welsh produce, and we sell um, all your basics, and we sell um, meat from the butchers and fruits and vegetables and bread and milk, that kind of thing, and a, a few luxury items as well. <laughs> yeah, well, all the better. So, so tell me a little bit about why you sort of selling local produce is important to you. Um, well... Just because I think it's the best that, that you can get. We're very lucky where we're located. We um, get our meat from J.H. Jones in Denby, who have, you know, they're award-winning butchers, and, uh, you know, their produce is just fantastic. Um, and also things like uh, the milk is from the milkman, who is supporting the, the farming community, which is very important to us. Um, and just because that's, that's what people want, it is the best that, that you can get. And we're very lucky that we're able to, to do that here. And, and people come to you expecting then that you have those local products uh, available and they choose you before maybe going to the supermarket. Is that what you find? Or do they use both um, at the end of it to an extent? Yeah, well, possibly. I, I, I guess you get a mixture of, of both. Um, the shop has always been famous for its ham. So, what, you know, when we, we took uh, the shop over, we didn't actually change anything. We kept the, the ham. Uh, we have we do a lot more hot food now. So we do um, again using J H Jones Butchers. Uh, we sell hot sausage rolls and we do um, uh, homemade soups with produce from from the shop here. Homemade scones and we do bacon butties and sausage butties and full breakfast. Everything and actually before all of this started, that's probably what we were bu busiest with. Well, you're making so, me hungry just uh, talking about it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm making myself hungry. <laughs> So tell me a bit now then about how the coronavirus pandemic has actually affected the business and maybe how it's changed people's practices in terms of shopping and what they buy. Um, well, yeah, that's quite an interesting one, really. When all this started, of course, we were panicking because we didn't know what we were supposed to do to protect ourselves and the staff and the community. So it's all been a series of trial and error to get to where we are now. So the first thing that we did was we, we just closed the shop a little bit earlier or you know we gave people an opportunity to come into the shop first thing but then we closed the doors and try to um, encourage people to come and collect their shop and pre-order it pay over the phone so the whole thing is contactless but what that meant was that all the nice things that we were doing like the hot sausage rolls and all the hot food and the sandwiches which we made so many that just stopped immediately um you know again we were feeding the workforce and that there wasn't a work workforce um, and uh, the things that people wanted were when they were buying the doing the home shopping was things that we weren't really stocking a lot of so for example fruit and veg we've always been we've always had a lot of fruit and veg but now we are selling I would say probably 10 times the amount at least 10 times the amount the same with the milk bread we can hardly get enough of, of these these products in so it's been it's been a real game changer, a completely different way of running the business. And moving forward, then has that changed your sort of perception of where the business is going or could go? Um, 
Possible. Well, it's 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 a difficult one to answer because what I liked most about the shop was it was such a sociable place, and we loved people coming in and having that face to face, having a chat with everybody, getting to know people. That's just stopped completely. Um, I don't want the stop the shop to carry on the way it is. I mean, it's it's great doing the home deliveries, and it's brilliant to think that we're helping people stay safe. Um, that's been rewarding and it's been very rewarding how um, grateful people have been because we just see it as doing our job and people have been so so grateful and so kind to us and they've really supported us as well um, but long term yeah we'll, of course we'll carry on delivering if that's what people want us to do but we cannot wait to open the shop again and um, you know get back to how we were before uh, you, you may know that Planker recently launched an I'm Buying Local campaign just to encourage uh, everyone and anyone to do a little bit more in terms of uh, supporting local businesses and, and local food producers. And I was doing a, a, an interview recently and, and the retort that was thrown back at me by a, a journalist was, well, don't people find that supermarkets are cheaper? What would you say to, to, to people who, who believe that? Um, well, I guess it's a question sort of pre pre-COVID or where we are now, because everything's changing. I can't even tell you how much prices are in a supermarket because I have not set foot in a supermarket since all this began. And I, we're a family of five and we are eating like kings at home. I can, I can tell you that for nothing. Um, I think, yeah, there is a perception that, that shops like this are more expensive, but our bread is the same price as in the supermarkets. If our fruit and vegetable is more expensive it's because honest to goodness it tastes a lot better you get what you pay for at the end of the day so and the other thing you've got to think ethically as well you know when you shop in a supermarket everything's covered in plastic you don't know how old it is a lot of it doesn't have any taste so mm -hmm. i guess you just need to weigh things up what what you really want out of your food i, I couldn't agree more and I, i've used the analogy in the past of the local economy being like a leaking bucket and supermarkets are big holes in those buckets yeah, um, yeah. With, with the money flowing away from from the local community and it's yes. important that we retain as much of that investment as we can with local businesses yes. which of course creates local jobs as well yes most definitely I mean, we're lucky here because um, because Mary and Errol had set the shop up so well and built such a fantastic client base. People were loyal to the shop and that they've carried on supporting us. And we're listening to what they want. They want local food. We want to sell local food. So that's just what we're doing. And it's working because we are being so well supported. You well, know, that's what it's all about. The more people support us, the more interesting things we can get in. The food here, the, the fruit and veg is super fresh because we're having to replenish our stock daily. So you haven't got something that's been sitting around for a week and is a bit mouldy and that just doesn't happen here. It's just, it's just going out the door quickly. But that is all down to people supporting us. Well, well Julia, thank you for joining us and uh, let's hope that the success, albeit in very difficult circumstances that you're experiencing now, continues and that the business goes from strength to strength. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you.